Did I get the Facebook post correct? Thank you. I didn't, I didn't see it. Yeah. Thank you. It, um, I've had a couple people tell me it, it really helped them understand that people have came in and talked to us and have a better understanding of what's going on. Good. Uh, yeah. Well, I just wanted to make sure that I got it correct. Yes. And it helped that Joyce chimed in right behind you and, and agreed with it. So that's, uh, makes us feel a whole lot better when people actually put a comment out there. That, Anything to help get the correct word out. Yeah. And Gwen, I understand you posted something too, but I didn't get to see it. We appreciate you guys. <clears throat> yeah, we do. You know, many times it's been contentious back and forth, but we're not, we, we're not want to fight with you guys. What we're trying to do is we're fighting for our homeland, yes. you know, and, and we see all across the nation, we see the, the usurpation of powers that are, have been locally controlled for years and years. And now for some reason, some administrative group or some board somewhere is, is pulling our local control away. And it's, it's, it's really scary. And this 911 thing is a perfect example of that. I know we're not a public comment set. No, we, we actually were there. Okay. <laughs> well, and Jared's been great about getting me the information. I just want to learn. I want to find out what's going on because I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've read that he sent me three reports. One was the mission critical summary page, and he gave he sent me the, uh, uh, the, the 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 statute about wanting to keep our 911 services up and running. And I think those are all great ideas. Mm -hmm. But what I'm having trouble understanding is what's the main difference between how we've done things, you know, budget, expenses, people, of the last few years. What is exactly is different now and what's the problem as we're moving into the next phase here next year well our biggest thing with moving into the next phase is we're taking city dispatch county dispatch and making them one so that was number one how how do we do that so that's where we brought mission critical in and did a study okay and in doing that the county has equipment and the city has equipment both of us have equipment that's obsolete we both have equipment that won't work together. We all buy our equipment from St. Francis County, from through Allen Wells up there. So when we're reviewing all this, okay, it's pretty easy to figure out. We combine the two dispatches, we're going to the city's wages. Okay, but we didn't know going into this, the city gave their dispatchers a pretty significant raise January 1. So that took the wage cost up significantly when you throw all the benefits and everything else so then when you talk to alan wells about what equipment we need and then what's the contracts on the equipment what's the maintenance fees what's the uh, annual service fees and all that when you get into all that the numbers just kept climbing and climbing. brenda will have to leave that open we'll have to leave it leave it at least cracked open i got it cracked okay anyways when we got into all that we went holy cow it's going to cost over a bonus of $1.2 million to combine these two and run it annually. We was trying to, was trying to come up with an annual budget for 911. And that's when Alan Wells come back and said, I can save you guys a bunch of money if you transfer everything up to St. Francis County. Like St. Jim County. Right. So we asked him, what kind of significant savings are you talking about? Well, it took him a few weeks and he come back with the number of $550,000 annually, and it all goes in his lap. So we're looking at over $700,000 savings. Get your attention. And in our job, that's taxpayers' money. We got to look at that. Sure. Understood that, but but we're still paying San Francisco County 600 grand a year or something to, for them to do that services for us, right? It's not. Yep. It's not like we're just making this go away. There's a service that's going to be required annually. So, and, and, and when it comes to the employees, aren't all the employees paid out of the general revenue fund for Perry County? I mean, every, see, yes. what, what would happen there, uh, he's got all their equipment. He can ping his phone. You can text 911 from his system. They're supposed to be able to find out where that phone is and then succeed. So that's safety, too. There's, there's, there's a lot of good there, too, but. It, it's been, we're waiting it out, and there's another couple yeah. things we're looking at too. But the expense of the employees, I mean, that's 
that's going to be the same no matter what. I mean, that's not just going to be specific to 911. That's going to be affect the Perry County right. General Revenue Fund, right? Right. And also, Damon, too, you got to keep in mind, we're taking two PSAPs. We don't need two. We need one combining it. So it's not going to, it's going to take less people. Now, hopefully there'll be other positions within the Joint Justice Center that some of these people can go to because we're going to need more help. And the sheriff will too. But uh, And eventually, they're talking about consolidation like we were just talking about. Several counties going to one. The state's really leaning towards that anyway. But Al Wells is on the, on the board at the state level. nationwide trend. We're yeah. already right. going to the nationwide. I, I, I don't doubt that so a bit. while this is going on, we're trying to build this new building. We're going to do the right thing. Right. And if it, we're going to put the brakes on. More options come. Let's think about it. No. Yeah. Right. Wait out. But, and it may be a national trend. I wouldn't doubt that a bit. Yeah, but but again, it goes back to the local control. If if we allow this national trend to continue, then someone in St. Francis County makes decisions over what happens to our nine one one call center. That's right. Good. I mean, that's the point. Yes. So we've just we've eliminated the ability for us to have a direct hand on what's going on. So we're functioning right now, and and I understand maybe we're not at the text level where we can see instantly where we are. But I have been made some calls that we said last week. And they were able to see me over Wi-Fi. So if they're able to see where my location is over Wi-Fi and cell network, then that's mm-hmm. that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're the other question is if you're in a situation where nine one one isn't accessible, their cell phone services don't work, you're you're kind of in a tough situation regardless, mm-hmm. right? Regardless. So now, so no system is going to fix that if you don't have access to that. Sure. So what's the problem with just leaving? The, the system separated. It's working right now. I talked to, to uh, Jason. He said we've never had a call that wasn't answered. There's been no complaints about 911 response time. But why don't we just leave it alone until we can actually come up with the money to keep it here? Well, that's why we're we're looking at other things too. Yeah. That's why we haven't made a decision yeah. on it. We're looking at some, we're, some other things have been presented to us, and we're looking at some other different ways to keep it here. Can, can you share those with us? No, it's, not, it's at this, not at anymore. this time. Okay. We will, though. We'll be glad as soon as, to, we, as, soon as we get all the information, because we'll, right now, if we try to share it with you, it'd just be bits and pieces of okay. something in it. can't have that. we got enough of that. Now. And then we don't want to get another rumor mill started. Of, uh, Understood. Understood. Because we don't have, we can't, we can't, if we gave any information out on it now, we'd have, we wouldn't have enough information to back it up. Understood. On what we're doing. Now, what, the, outside of the three documents that Jared sent me, was there a report, like an eighty-page report that Mission Critical provided to the county? Absolutely, there is. Okay, yes, I'd There's like to get a copy of that. Report that they came back with that explained what do all we have to do to combine the two dispatches together. Okay, and they had a budget number on there for wages, but those wages were based off of two years ago, so those wages are inaccurate. Yeah, in there, equipment has gone up also. So the equipment prices they were putting in there and what we have to have are also inaccurate. Okay. So and Alan Wells uh, in St. Francis County, they're our backup now. If we go down, he, he takes over. So this this mission critical Critical. study was done two years ago already? Year, two, two years ago, year and a half to two years okay. ago. And, and then the other day, I have this correct that that the ambulance is going to be dispatched out of Springfield Mercy soon, correct? That's the way they're leaning to go. But do we have it? We don't really know a time frame. We don't know a time frame. They're they're right looking now, at that. It hasn't always been. Uh, no. I do know one thing for a fact that I was told that if we decided to try to charge Mercy for 911 services, they will definitely move it quickly. They're not going to. They're not going to pay for us to do nine one one dispatch when they have their own nine one one dispatch center set up in Springfield, which is separate from ours. So they're not going to be required to meet any additional standards. Fifty four percent of the calls come for medical. Right. Anyway. Understood. But but if a call comes up locally now nine one one and they need an ambulance service, don't we many times reach out to other ambulance services in the area? I mean, no, it's just just the only ambulance service we do is. Is Perry County? It was was Perry County, and now Mercy, now Mercy. Mercy okay. controls it. Yeah, and so we don't fetch any. If you're on the Cape County border, to, if there's something in in Cape County that's closer that's not dispatched. If if someone is in on the Cape County line, and they call in and they say they're they want a Cape County ambulance, they'll call one out. Okay. But other than that, if they call nine one one, the default. Perry. The default will okay. automatically be Perry. Okay, I understood that. 
I know they had problems with the fire departments for a long time because the default would be variable rule if you call 911 and you needed the fire department until they finally figured out boundaries and had these location services where they could say, okay, you're down below the 126 mile marker on the interstate, that's Beely. If you're north of that, it's Perryville. Now, and 61 is all Perryville. Uh, 51 is Perryville until you get, oh, down around where Rehagen Sawmill is. Then, then it gets split, depending on what side of the road you're on, is Perryville and Beely. Right. So, <clears throat> took a long time to get all those boundaries lined out and stuff. But, um, right now, the city's equipment is so outdated that the county's handling most of the calls. If, it's, if they need city police or city fire, they're transferring back to the city. But everything else, the county is handling. Okay, but it's working though, <clears throat> right? I mean, we we have an effective nine one one call center right now. But we're we're both we're both paying for the same equipment or not similar equipment. So that was where we really looked at the cost savings. Plus, it would downstaff a couple, not a whole bunch, but it downstaff a couple. Well, and, and we was looking at that because up until a few months ago, we were working people way more hours than they should be working doing dispatch because we didn't have enough employees. Yeah. And you're right, every place, every place is like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, right now, the city raised their, their wages, they're still down one or two. I can't remember what she said the other day. They're down one for sure, but maybe two. And right now we're fully staffed. That's the first time, what do you say, 10 years or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that we're fully staffed on dispatch. But one of them is going out on maternity to leave pretty soon. So for a period of time, we won't be fully staffed either. So it's it's a constant battle. Dale, we knew our equipment was outdated so bad. Why wasn't we replacing it on an ongoing basis? Well, so to get to get to the equipment that Mission Critical says we should have to do nine one one correctly, to get to all this updated equipment, that's where the different big cost is, and the two the equipment that won't work together. No, so we've got to we've got to add more equipment and get rid of some old equipment. But yeah, we've been keeping up, and it's it's not cheap to keep up with this equipment. The other thing that people have not noticed, and I've been waiting to catch our 911 director, he calls me every time our system goes down and lets me know that we are running on the backup system. St. Francis County is our backup system. And as far as I know, no one has ever noticed a difference when we're running on the backup system. But it's happened how many times? And that's, I don't know how many times. I know in, in the five years I've been here, Tom has called me four or five times and said, hey, we're running on the backup system. So. Who's the backup to San Francisco? They have, they have their own backup. Those guys in St. Francis, I've seen that. I've toured that. And it's, it's like massive. I mean, it's, it's impressive. And that's in Farmington? Park okay. Hills. Park Hills. Park Hills. And then, but... Like Alan said too, they got their dispatchers, and if they're busy or overloaded or something, everybody in that building, uh, the sheriff's department, they're able to take they're trained to take those calls. Also, mm -hmm. they can actually go to their e individual desks. Yeah, every, so every everybody office, is he's got a backup for the backup. Yeah. So, very very interesting. So yeah, there's there's a lot of information flying around out there. That, yeah. You know. We have to look at every bit of it, take it all in consideration. Do I just want to flat rip out 911 and, and move it there? I'm not after that, but I'm after whatever it takes to save taxpayers money and be safe. And, and, be safe. and I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have looked at this if it wouldn't be such a significant amount of money. No, I understand. Uh, but, but I think if the people are able to understand, see what's really going on. Yeah. I mean, I've talked to lots of people here in the last couple of weeks, and everybody is in agreement that if we need to bump sales tax in Perry County to keep our security services local, I haven't heard a single person yet that complained about it. So, I mean, that's something that I hope that's one of the options you guys are exploring now is to see that, what... That option is out there. Uh, we want to exhaust every option we have before we even consider a sales tax. Uh, if, this, if a couple of these other options work out, 
we might be able to pull it off. Well, I, I think too, right, as you keep in mind, our goal is when the Joint Justice Center opens to have it figured out. Yeah. So we, you know, when that thing opens, it'd be not, or right before, it'd be nice to have it put together, working, then move it into that new facility if that's what happens. So are we in a hurry? No, but we want to get it done. Bill and Greg but do either. when, you know, we were looking at stuff and then this option came up, so we looked at it and then wrong information got out or not correct and, well, you know, the rest of that story, so. Well, I don't think we've spread any wrong information. Nope. I mean, that. No, I haven't heard, I haven't seen anything nope. that you got. No, I'm not I mean, accusing anybody. I think some We are absolutely wanting thing. to make sure that everything that we talk about is accurate. Right, and know, safe. The, the, the biggest deal is safety for the people. That's, that's the number one. Right. Well, I think the other thing is, like, say there's no complaints that what we got's not working. Right. And I say every, every way, thing we do to keep it right here in Perry County, joined together would be the best thing for the long-term future to this county. Yeah. You know, I we want transparency. Like I said the other day, we give transparency on an option we were looking at. Look what happened. Yeah. Right in their face. And the other question I'm, I'm kind of struggling with is why can't we do this piecemeal? Why can't we run with what we've got successfully uh, until we can actually come up with a plan to make sure well, that's what we're doing. Okay, so then, that, so we haven't set any hard date by such and such. Boom, this has to happen. No, no. Okay, well, all right. Well, see, that's something else I've heard different. That was different. There's that, nothing. Oh. That we've not put a date on on this. Jay, Jay, Jay said it the best. We want to have this figured out and streamlined by the time we move into that building. Okay. That way, and you know, there's so many things going around. Like, what are they trying to save money on nine one one? Oh, we're over budget. No, the, the price of the building is more than it was when it started, but we got that covered. It's two different things. Right. 911 dispatch is not the Joint yeah. Justice Center building. And when is the target date for the building to be open? By the end of the year, next year. Okay. Hopefully before. The, the projected time to be done is, is November, December. So not saying about we're, a year. Not saying we're going to move in then. When we get to get around the holidays and stuff, we may just choose to continue until after the first duty of the year and then make the move, depending on how the schedule works out. Okay. And it's not going to, it won't be a wholesale change move that everybody's going in there the same day. Yeah. We'll move, if we move 911 dispatch in there, they'll go probably first. We'll get, make sure they're up and running correctly. Then probably move the sheriff and the jail in make sure that's all working and then go city police Courts. and then the courtrooms and the, and the circuit clerk and and the prosecuting attorney you know probably do, do basement level main level and then upper level so there was a rumor floating around and maybe i have this wrong but i understood that the police department was going to stay where they're at instead of moving into the justice center that's, that is a rumor. Completely, that's a rumor. False. completely false gotcha. this this building will house 911 dispatch e911 jail jail staff sheriff's department police department and then you'll go upstairs to the, the judge's chambers will be up there the circuit clerk prosecuting attorney Oh, and I forgot the coroner. The coroner will be in the on the main <laughs> level. So we're we're consolidating a whole bunch of groups in this building for the benefit of everybody. And there's a Cape County told me this back when we started looking at this building that I, I think it's by 2030 you will no longer be able to chain gang your prisoners together and parade them to a courtroom. Like, we do, like we do now up here. They will have to be individually handcuffed and in a suit and tie, taken one at a time. Wow. Right now we're paying two people time and a half to bring them up like we're bringing them up. You get to that, now you're probably talking four people because you gotta have a driver and person take, watching the prisoner. <clears throat> you're probably talking four people to watch them and you're constantly running back and forth so you're just going to waste a bunch of money and time and overtime. So that's where the courtroom came up. Hey, if we move it in there and do like Cape County does, you come out of a jail cell, you go into an elevator, up to the level where the courtroom is, get put in a holding cell. 
you're there in that holding cell, and there will have two holding cells there. So when you're, you're called into court, you come out of the holding cell, you walk right in, in the door into the courtroom. When you're done, you're taken right back to the holding cell. The next person's brought in, then they'll take you down back to your cell or release you, whatever it's going to be, and bring the next one. They won't ever set foot outside the building. So it takes a whole bunch of labor costs away and fears of people because right now we could be parading these guys in chain ganged and the defendant could be walking in the door with them. So could the prosecuting attorney and so could the judge right. walking in and they've had that happen before and people start mouthing and cussing and so it eliminates all that. So that's, that that's a big like plus. A good plan. This is a yep. real good. We went down and looked at how Cape County does it and very, very well planned out. So that, that's all that stuff in there. Now the prosecuting attorney doesn't have to pack the stuff from her office to a courtroom across town. Her office will be right. there on the same main floor. She just has to take it from there into the courtroom. So the, the exact existing buildings that we're going to be having as a result of the consolidation is our plan. Are we going to sell those buildings, repurpose those buildings, or what's well, the idea there? Caitlin Pistorio and her husband own the building there. Right? So he'll stay in there with his practice. Um, the courthouse, the courtroom, and, and the offices that will be vacant there. We're looking at a couple of different things to change around. There We talked about the uh, archive center out at the MAC building, bringing it back in and putting it in the courthouse, and maybe the museum. Then we wouldn't have anything out at the MAC building anymore. We wouldn't be paying rent out there. Okay. So it's a, a lot to look at. Yeah. We said we're... We're focusing on getting this building to a certain point before we look at what we're going to do there for sure. We haven't set nothing in stone. Um, we talked about even uh, tourism at one point, moving up there and taking an office in that building. We don't know if that <coughs> will happen or not. Several different ideas. And then the jail. We have a potential buyer for the property. Um, if that falls through, We'll just demo it because the building is dangerous. Dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. It's unhealthy. There's so much mold in there. We talked about can it be repurposed for something else with the way it's designed and all the mold that's in it. Um, I don't think you could get it a tenant in there for a reasonable price. You'd have to do mold excavation or remediation or whatever before. Yes. And the city at one time thought they had a buyer for their building, and that fell through. But Brent has said that they're going to repurpose it for more city offices, move some stuff around, and, and repurpose it. Okay. So that take, that'll take away the rumors of old Mary Jane's already bought it up there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <coughs> that, that, heard, heard that rumor that Mary Jane's already bought it, and they have to be out by a certain time. <laughs> Some people believe all these rumors. I believe you. Oh, I believe you. So, so in summary, no decisions have been made right now. Y'all are trying to find a solution to keep nine one. We are local. listening. Our ears are on. That's what I'm saying. And, and this is going out on, on YouTube. And I can tell you that I've received positive comments about being able to have access to see what you guys are talking about. And they've been positive. It's not, you know, once again, it's not a condemnation. The people just want to understand so we can eliminate these stupid rumor mills that's going around. I mean, nothing is more difficult and harmful than an inaccurate rumor, yes. right? I mean, it wastes everybody's time. It gets everybody worked up about stuff that's not real, and then you have to undo that and unpack all that, get the emotions away before they finally actually see what the truth is. And what I'm interested in is helping get the truth out of what's going on and the best way to keep our 911 services local. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. okay. Appreciate that. And, and the thing of it is, no matter what gets done, like we said earlier, there's no one perfect answer because it, it won't work for all residents. Because just like Mr. Womack in here the other day talked about, he, he's got to have a landline because his cell phone won't work. Exactly. I'm kind of familiar with that area out there, and if you're off the wrong ridge, <laughs> <laughs> right. you, you, the one, you're, you're done for. The one thing I would like to have him test sometime out there, though, I've told this story over. It's you know, always talk about Big Brother. What listening? So, 
You know, he knows where the Sportsman's Club Lodge is. He's been there. He knows there's literally no cell service in this place. We're sitting on the couch. There's three couples. We're watching TV. It's Saturday afternoon, about 2 o'clock, and we're discussing whether we drive back into Perryville Saturday evening and go to church or go to church Sunday morning. You know, drive back in Sunday morning and go to church. Three of our phones dinged. Catholic Mass on EWTN, such and such time, <laughs> Sunday morning. And you looked up and it says, no service. Yeah. So what I'd like to have tested sometime is the text to 911 on that. Because they, they, they claim that you can be in a spot where there's no service. And you can, if you text 911, they'll still receive it. So there's a system out there that's, that knows where that phone is. I think you just have to have certain access to that you're in order to get it. You're probably right. Because them phones should have never dinged that night. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they did. Yep. But it was, it was kind of spooky. We all, and what was funny, me and my wife were sitting there, my phone dinged, and then one of the other couple's phones dinged, and one of the other couple's phones dinged. It wasn't mine and my wife's. It was all three, so it was like it went to all three different owners of the phones. <laughs> You all have the same carrier? Yeah, we all had AT and T, but it, it was just funny. Yeah. It's just a little spooky. <laughs> no, well, yeah, I agree with you. No. Yeah, we are being listened to. There's oh, yeah. no doubt. Make make no mistake about that. Well, you can talk about something, then next time you go on on the line yep. on the line, it advertisements far pop up. Yep. Or you talk to somebody some night at the restaurant, and then the next day they pop up on Facebook. Or a friend request or whatever. That's mm -hmm. like it's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Pretty crazy. And guys, just so you know, I love having these conversations. I like these conversations because what does help us get the information out. And I try to do it as much as possible. When I get in a hurry, sometimes and, and cut people off, is when we have a a full schedule. We've got a fairly easy schedule today, so I thought hey, we can we can carry on a little longer. We appreciate that. So, I'm not I'm not trying to cut anybody off. I want people to hear and listen and share information, especially when there's so much misinformation. Yep, I agree. Well, and there's a distinct difference in the vibe of this room in this chamber than there is lots of other boards in yeah. Southeast Missouri. <laughs> yeah. I can promise you that. So you know, yeah. we still feel like we can actually come and talk to you and that you listen to us and that you've got our best interest at heart. We try to. We know. We know during Goodwill we're not going to please everybody. In this job, you can never please anybody or everybody. Not anybody. Everybody. Well, but you, you try to please the majority. Because the majority should rule, and that's what I try to look at. What 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 will the majority of the, the people in this county say on something like that? That's what I I try to go by. And am I going to be right all the time? No. If I think I'm going to be right all the time, then I need to be examined. <laughs> but thank you, guys. Yeah. You're I'm talking about, didn't somebody say something about building some houses back down where Burger King used to be? What where is it? No, there's not tiny houses going in. There's going to be uh, apartments. more apartments going in back there. Oh, okay. Duplex type thing. Yeah. I like what we're told. Uh, kind of like what's there now. Back in there further, and it'll be for a little bit of everything. It'll be they'll be able to have low income in there, elderly, starting families. Okay. So it's a little bit for everything. So, so that cleared up a misunderstanding. Yes. Some, some of those are based on income. Yes, and it's so, even it's even income on the elderly, like out there by across from uh, the seminary. Mm -hmm. Those are based on the elderly homes, right. but it's based on annual income. But that's a private project completely, That's a private right? project, yeah. That's not and that's in the city limits, so it's all zoned. Yeah. we got to meet all the requirements. That we're yeah. allow it. So what's going on, like, out where Eldon Kaufman lives? Somebody's doing something out there, too. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Like, out on T Road, down out past um, the Community Lake, like, just right up oh, to um, Bruce and Longa Bears. Bruce and Bears subdivision. Subdivision. Oh, there. okay. <coughs> That was Roger Elder's old ground. Remember Roger?
And then they're moving dirt up here on the hill behind the ASCS office right now. I, I guess he's going to start trying to do a subdivision in there. That thing's been plotted for years. It costs too much money to put the infrastructure in. And we need houses. We need some housing in here. A little bit of, you know, it's, when you say we need a little bit of housing for everything, I, I always choose carefully how I say that because I struggle with, uh, in, in, especially in Perry County, with the real low income housing because if anybody wants to go to work in Perry County, they should be able to find a job. There's plenty of jobs available. So I have a little hard feelings when, when I hear people with low income. Um, but we need afford housing that people can afford that are working, no matter where they're working at, is, is the way I like to phrase that. Right. It's not, not low income housing, it's you need to have a house available out there for someone who works at Gilston Mary Lee, you need a house out there for someone who works at the hospital, TG, East Perry Lumber, you know, housing that they can afford. Well, not today, but coming up, I'd, I'd like to talk about a couple things. One is uh, the legal alien situation that we're going to be facing. I don't know if you guys caught it, but St. Louis mayor is talking about bringing who knows how many that illegals from Chicago down here. I mean, this is just insane stuff. Mm -hmm. And then also, and I've got, I did a video on I can send you guys. Are you all familiar with the new safety act that Illinois has got into place? That eliminates cash bail? Yes, I've seen that. Okay. That's, that's very, very frightening. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's, it's horrifying is for what it means to our state, right? I mean, right now with the way the Safety Act is, someone could come over here, kidnap a child, get back over in Illinois, and nothing is going to happen to that person. There won't be any Illinois official looking for that person. And even if they do catch the kidnapper, the only thing that's going to happen, they're going to be a, issued a ticket with a summons to appear and released. Mm -hmm. Well, those are things we need to be aware of as we're moving forward, especially with our security services here in, in, uh, in Perry County. I'm going to talk to Sheriff about that. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. I know you guys, so you got, we're coming up on time. So, yeah. appreciate your time today, guys. Yep. Thank you. You bet. All right. Yep. Thanks for your support. Yep. Yep. Have a good weekend, guys. Hey, Jared, thanks for the reports and stuff. I do want to get uh, that. There's an 80 page report that uh, Mission Critical. Uh, pushed it through. I'd like to get a hold of that. Can we do that? It's never been an open site. My dad, that's the one I don't know if, if, we, you know, know, if we can allow that one out or not. For years on well, we'll talk about it. We'll see. Yeah, I got no problem it sending it if it's it's just not, a, it's never been an open document yet. I, I understand. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Okay, thanks you guys. We'll see you.